everybody, and welcome back to 3DX Design STEM Show, episode number three. And today, we have a super special activity for you today, and it's inspired by a book that was recommended to us by a librarian friend from one of the elementary schools that we work with. Box Attached was written by a Canadian best-selling author, Kim Smith, who apparently knows quite a thing or two about building with cardboard which is why we at 3Docs love her so much. So today's activity is actually going to be a series of three separate videos, each one with its own challenge. And if you get through all activities and you want to, you might just get an opportunity to meet the author, Kim, herself. So stay tuned, get ready for episode number one, and here we go. So how many of you guys know a little something about building with cardboard boxes? Maybe you've made a fort to hide in, a puppet theater, or even a truck for your little brother. Well, you know what? You're not alone. Believe it or not, even adults like to make things out of cardboard. In fact, that's actually what architects and engineers do. They make models of their project before they build the real thing. I mean, wouldn't you really want to get all of your dimensions right and test out your ideas before you build something like a bridge or a hotel that people are going to use? Artists can also use cardboard for their work too. Artist Isaac Kingless used recycled materials like cardboard to create a model of his vision for the perfect world. His whole city was on display in New York City at the MoMA just a few years ago. In the book Box Attacks, we meet a little girl named Meg. She is a brilliant and creative architect of all things made from a cardboard box. She is, as Kim describes her, a box attack. Her specialty seems to be shelters of all kinds. Meg is always impressing her classmates with her incredible castles and forts and all was going well until one day a new girl, Simone, shows up. And she is also a box attacked. She loves to make transportation structures and her projects, much to Meg's frustration, are amazingly awesome. Her designs are beautiful and sturdy and in some, she can even give other kids rides. Well, I don't wanna to give too much of the book away, so let's get ready for today's challenge. Here are some materials that you will need. You'll want an assortment of cardboard shapes. You can use three ducts connectors for the cardboard, or if you have it home, you can just use tape. You'll also definitely want some scissors. Other materials that you can find in the home that you can add would include straws, craft paper, glue sticks, colored pencils, assorted toys, and you can also ask an adult to help you go through the recycling bin and find some other treasures that you can use. So feel free to stop the video now and collect all the materials you might need. Don't worry about us. We'll be waiting right here for you when you get back. Hi everybody and welcome back. Hope you got all of your supplies ready and are excited to get started on challenge number one. So what is challenge number one? It is design a shelter. Um, so for this activity, um, I want you to think about what it means to have a shelter. Um, you probably live in a shelter. So maybe you live in a home or an apartment, or maybe you live in a yurt in Mongolia. Um, everybody's idea of what a shelter is is different. And it's a really good opportunity for us to think about what shelters are and the differences in shelters around the world. And then once you have a little bit more knowledge, you can design the shelter that you want and build it out of the materials that you just collected. So I have a really fun activity for you guys and a little challenge. Um, if you have a map or you have a globe at your home, what you're going to do is, whoops, not very good at opposites on video. Uh, so here's my globe. So what you can do is take your globe or your map, close your eyes, and either spin your globe or move your map around on the table, point to an area, and open your eyes. Now I pointed to water. And you know why? 
71% of our planet is actually made out of water. So seven out of 10 of you probably actually poke your finger at water. If that happens, don't worry, just try again, spin and go again. So this time I wound up in China. Um, so I'm gonna take this opportunity to do a little bit of research of China and learn a little bit about the culture and about the shelters that they have there. And then I'm going to design and build my shelter accordingly. Now, whether you decide to build your shelter based on a faraway land or based on a shelter from your own community, there's something important to know, and that is what the function of a shelter is. The purpose of a shelter is to protect its inhabitants or the people that live there. So you have to think about the things in that community that the people need protection from. Think about things like weather. So is the environment excessively hot or cold? Or do we need to protect the inhabitants from things like rain or snow or really hot sun? Shelters also protect inhabitants from animals out in the wild, like lions and bears. Some animals that we need protection from are actually small. Did you know that in Africa, the animal that kills more people is actually a mosquito? It can cause an infection called malaria. So in African homes, having protection from mosquitoes with either mosquito nets or screens are really important. When you design your shelter, make sure that it protects its inhabitants from the elements of nature. But you can also add some other features that support life's comforts, like a place to sleep, a place to eat, and also a place to go to the bathroom, or even a playroom for fun. Now take your time and design your shelter before you build it. You can also print out some worksheets if you want. Go to our website, www.3ducksdesign.com and find the STEM show episode number three, the Box of Tech lesson. There you will find some printable worksheets, including an idea board to draw out some ideas, some graph paper, and a ruler if you need it. When you're finished, don't forget to take some photos and share your story with us for a chance to win prizes, including a signed book by Kim Smith, the author of Boxitex. This concludes challenge number one. When you're finished, just make sure to save your shelter. You will need it for part three. Thanks again for watching and look forward to seeing your projects.